The most dangerous fat in your body isn't the stuff that you can see that sits in front of your abs. It's what's building up behind your abs, silently wrecking your hormones, energy, focus, and metabolic health. It's called visceral fat. And even if you have a normal body weight, you may be carrying more of it than you think. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how and why we accumulate this fat, how to get a very good idea if you have too much of it and what impact it's having on you, and finally, how to lose it for good. Now, all of this will be based on science and research, not gimmicky TikTok trends and influencers. And if you're new here, my name is Adam. I'm a health and fitness coach with a master's in nutrition, and I'm doing a PhD in human performance. Before we begin, if you want a free calculator to visually see exactly how long it will take you to get to your ideal body fat week by week, then check out the link below the video. The jiggly fat that you can see is called subcutaneous fat, and it's more cosmetic, but visceral fat is a kind of fat stored around your organs. Think of it like this. You've got organs in a backpack, and the visceral fat is like stuffing bubble wrap in between them, except the bubble wrap actively pumps out inflammatory signals, messes with hormones, and makes everything run worse. This fat is more metabolically active. It releases cytokines, free fatty acids, and disrupts insulin signaling. This is why people who have high visceral fat often have high fasting glucose, high cholesterol, fatty liver, and elevated blood pressure. It's even linked with lower levels of testosterone and reduced brain volume in the hippocampus, a region critical for memory. Essentially, high levels of visceral fat is terrible for your health and longevity and is a direct path towards diabetes, heart disease, and feeling and performing subpar on an everyday basis. And if you have high levels of visceral fat, it means that you likely have an even more dangerous type of fat, ectopic fat. Ever heard of foie gras, that luxury dish made from the liver of ducks and geese after they've been force fed until their liver essentially swells up with fat? Yeah, that's not just a French delicacy. That is also exactly what's happening to your body when you carry too much visceral fat. Here's the deal. Your body has a fat storage system with a hierarchy. First, it stores fat under the skin, the subcutaneous fat. That's the stuff that you can pinch. But once that's full, it starts packing around your organs. This is visceral fat. Still not ideal, but your body can just about handle it. But if you keep overflowing that system, your body panics and starts storing fat inside the organs themselves, somewhere that it's never supposed to be. That is called ectopic fat, and it's like turning your own liver into foie gras, except in your case, it doesn't end with a fancy dinner, it ends with insulin resistance, type two diabetes, inflammation, and heart disease. So how do you know if you have high levels of visceral fat? Well, let's start with how it accumulates. Our bodies all have billions of fat cells. Think of them like little water balloons. As you eat too much food over time, they expand with more and more water, or fat in this case, and you get more of that subcutaneous fat. But eventually, these cells become too full, and your body needs to add more and more fat cells, or water balloons, until the point where it no longer can, and that is when the fat starts going places that it's not supposed to go. So people who are very overweight, let's say 30% plus body fat in men, are guaranteed to have high levels of visceral fat. But since many people have a lower personal fat threshold, their bodies don't continue to add these additional fat cells. This is known as reduced adipocyte proliferation. This means they store visceral fat a lot sooner than others. The classic example is a skinny fat man, someone who doesn't have extremely high levels of body weight or BMI, but a large round belly. Now, there are many ways to check if you have high visceral fat, such as an MRI, DEXA, or CT scan, but these are often impractical. A much more simple approach is to measure your waist and height and compare them. If your waist measurement is more than half of your height, then you are at the upper limit of what is considered healthy and safe for visceral fat. So let's say you're five foot 10, which is 70 inches, then your waist should be no more than 35 inches, but ideally even lower than that. In addition, getting a blood test that looks at your cholesterol, triglycerides, and blood glucose, that will give you a clinical insight into whether you are having downstream effects from that visceral fat. This all sounds pretty daunting, but here is the good news. It is really simple to reduce your visceral fat and by far the biggest influence, a sustained calorie deficit. Not only does visceral fat come off the same way as subcutaneous fat or that fat that you can see, but a good chunk of that initial fat loss is a visceral fat. Studies have shown that early on in weight loss, visceral fat often decreases faster in percentage terms than the fat under the skin. This is great because it means after just a few weeks, you may already significantly improve your health, even if you don't yet see a six pack. And that is why I always get my clients to measure not only the scale weight, but their waist circumference too. With consistent effort, you could be down say five to 10% of your body weight by the 12 week mark. For someone at 200 pounds, that's a 10 to 20 pounds lost. It may not sound dramatic compared to crash diets, but those pounds are likely mostly fat and a substantial portion of that will be from visceral fat. According to research, a five to 10% weight loss can reduce visceral fat by 10 to 30% or more depending on the person. So the important part, how do you get rid of it? 
Now, there is no magic pill, but there is a clear proven formula and it starts with the fundamentals. Number one, strength train at least two to four times per week. Lifting weights is a non-negotiable if you want to burn fat and protect muscle. Why? Because muscle tissue is metabolically active. It helps you burn more calories even when resting, but more importantly, resistance training improves insulin sensitivity, helping your body store less fat and use more glucose in your muscles rather than sending it to your belly. Focus on big compound lifts, squats, deadlifts, presses, and rows. You don't need to live in the gym. Just two to four well-structured sessions a week can completely shift your body composition. Number two, do cardio, but don't overthink it. Cardio helps create a calorie deficit and mobilize visceral fat fast. Studies show that moderate to vigorous aerobic exercise like brisk walking, running, cycling, reduces visceral fat significantly, even without major weight loss. If you like high intensity intervals, great. If you prefer a daily walk, that also works as well. The best cardio is one that you'll actually do consistently. Aim for 150 minutes minimum per week. That is just 30 minutes, five days a week. If you can do more, then that's great. Number three, move more throughout the day. One of the most overlooked aspects of fat loss is non-exercise activity thermogenesis or NEAT. This is the energy you burn just living your life, walking around, fidgeting, taking the stairs, standing instead of sitting. These little movements add up. A sedentary person might burn 500 fewer calories per day compared to someone with high NEAT, even if they're the same weight. So don't just train hard for an hour, move more all day. Take the stairs, go for a 10 minute walk after lunch and park the car further away in the parking lot. I personally like to track my steps using my Garmin watch. Number four, eat in a calorie deficit with enough protein and fiber. A calorie deficit is king, but what you eat can make staying in a calorie deficit impossible or really easy. High protein preserves muscle, curbs hunger, and slightly boosts your metabolism. Aim for around one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. High fiber keeps you full, stabilizes blood sugar, and is directly linked with reduced belly fat and lower levels of cholesterol, especially soluble fiber from foods like oats, legumes, berries, and veggies. Minimize ultra processed foods. These are really easy to overeat and don't satisfy your hunger well. Particularly limit high saturated fat foods like butter, cream, and fatty cuts of meat because these have been shown to directly increase that ectopic fat in the liver compared to healthier fats. If you really want a simple guideline, fill up one quarter of your plate with protein and the rest with plants. Do that three times a day and I'd be shocked if that didn't kickstart some fat loss for most people. Number five, fix your sleep and manage your stress. Chronic stress and poor sleep make everything else worse. In spite of what many influencers say, stress isn't the reason why you have a round belly and your friend doesn't despite being the same weight, but it does make everything else much more difficult to stick to. A lack of sleep disrupts your hunger hormones, making you crave more high calorie foods the next day, and it kills your testosterone and energy. You really need to start here. Too many people over identify with being bad sleepers and talk themselves into that identity. Cut out phones, alcohol, and large meals before bed. And I know you don't need another person telling you to get at least seven hours of sleep, but what can be helpful is simply setting your bedtime 15 minutes earlier than where it is at right now. Another thing that I found very useful with the men that I work with is going for a 15 minute walk in the evening. Not only will that help you separate the end of the workday with rest, but it also will help your body start to wind down. Of course, journaling, meditation, and having time to switch off will completely bring down your overall stress, but by far the largest lever here is creating a consistent sleep and wake time and having a wind down routine. That goes without saying, cut the alcohol. It doesn't have to be forever, but prove to yourself that this is important to you by giving it up or at least drastically reducing it until you can make a heavy dent in your progress. Visceral fat is dangerous, but it's also highly responsive to change. With a few smart and consistent habits, training, nutrition, movement, and recovery, you can reduce it dramatically and improve your energy, hormones, and long-term health and longevity. You don't have to be perfect, nor will you be, but the important thing is that you keep moving forward even when life throws curveballs. The reason you ended up with extra fat is largely because of your lifestyle over a number of years, so it's lifestyle change that's gonna get you out of this situation. The world doesn't stop because you have a health goal, so in any situation, think, what is the best that I can do, not what is the best that I should do? Again, if you want to see what's possible in terms of fat loss timeframes, if you stay consistent, then check out the calculator below the video. And if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how I drop fat as fast as possible, then check out this next video here.